Tonight we're doing a walk along the beach in Sanua. So it's a night beach walk to show you how safe the track is, whether there's lighting or not, and also what the nightlife is like along most of those bars and restaurants up there. So we're starting at Pantai Murtasari and walking all the way to Pantai Bangsal. And Pantai Bangsal is the one just before the old Grand Inner and Murtasari is the one at the very southern end. So it's just turned seven o'clock, the sun set about half an hour ago and it's pretty dark, but the warungs at the very southern end at Pantai Murtasari are still open. I would say they're probably gonna close pretty soon because it's quite quiet down here. So let's start walking. Walking north here from Pantai Murtasari, beach on the right, car park and warungs on the left. I actually did a bit of a stroll along this beach from north, uh, from south to north a couple of months back now. I'll put a link in the description below so you can have a look what it's like in the daytime and maybe compare it to what it's like right now at night. The first spot we're coming up to is the Genius Cafe. So that first section there was pitch black but the Genius Cafe is brightly lit and that's right next door to the McCure. And as you can see, this is extremely popular at night. Unbelievable. In the mornings, you might get a couple of tables full, but here, almost 100% full. I would hazard a guess that most of those people are actually dining there who are guests at the Makua, because the Makua is really far south and quite isolated from the rest of Sanua. Um, and that would be the most convenient place to go and get something to eat if you're staying in the Makua. And that's the Makua itself. There's a little bar there, and then you poke your head over the bushes there. You get into the, uh, into the pool area. And about 50 meters up from the Makua is Retro Beach. Um, and there's a little restaurant there, the Retro Beach Bar, I think it's called. And that's pretty popular. So I'd say that place is about 75% full. Very popular. Uh, in the mornings, I mean, you almost, I would almost never see anyone there at night. Totally different scene. And that's part of the, the appeal of walking down here at night is that if you've come down here in the day, you've got absolutely no idea how it changes when you come here in the night. This is that bar, uh, they call it the Beach Cafe. It's quiet, really quiet, busier in the mornings. Makes sense, it's more of a cafe, coffee shop type place anyway. We're down to the Prama now, they've got live music going, and this place is really popular, all in-house dining, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's an absolutely massive hotel, so there's a lot of, always a lot of guests staying there. So you'd expect their restaurants and stuff to be busy and they've got enough money to put on a live band. Uh, so if you're staying at the Prama, you'll be pretty impressed by, you know, that sort of, uh, late night activity, or it's not even late, but you know, night activities. We've made it to the Puri Santrian. Puri Santrian looks like that at night. Nice views over the water, all lit up. This is actually a very popular hotel with quite high prices. It's sort of a good standard. And again, it's got a lot of customers. You'll always see this place busy in the mornings. And now that it's nighttime, it's packed as well. And I'd guess most of those people are in-house guests as well, but if you're staying in the Puri Sun Town, you can actually eat up and down the beach here. So it's probably now 500 meters from the Genius Cafe and between Genius and here, there's quite a few places that I've already passed. Up this way, we're gonna head into, oh, places like Stuja di Pante, which is a cafe, uh, La Playa, and we'll get to those and they're not far from here. So if you're staying at Puri Santerian, you've got options. A 
About 100 metres up from the Puri Santrian are a bunch of warongs. I always thought they might be pretty popular at night. I have, I, this is the first time I've been down here at night because there's a lot of warongs, but right now they are very quiet. There's only a couple of tables being served up here. But keep it in mind if you're staying around the Puri Santrian because there's good quality and cheap food here. Seafood and you know, Indonesian faves and that sort of stuff. A few more tables are being filled up here as well. So the lights and the path sort of uh, didn't really exist between where I started and Puri Santrian. Between there, there's not so many lights, so I guess it's very dark between the hotels. From the Puri Santrian onwards, so far, it's been very bright, well lit, um, totally safe. And we've arrived at Stuja di Pantai. Now they've got some live music going on here as well. Uh, quite popular with the Indonesian crowd. You don't find too many foreigners here for some reason. I'm not sure what the story is, but very popular with the Indonesians. Uh, music sounds pretty good too, and it's a great little spot to sit out. I can't comment on the food, unfortunately. Just around the corner from Studio di Pantai, we have uh, Tapa or Tapa, depends on who you speak to. T A P H A, very popular place. Look at this. This is another one of those places that is absolutely dead in the mornings. Come dinner time, it's packed. Very, very popular and people come from all over Sonora just to go there to listen to a bit of live music and have a cheap feed. Which then brings us to the Intercontinental and their little Pier 8 restaurant out the front. Again, another dead restaurant in the morning. At night, well, I don't know, we've probably got 10% full, 15% full, but there's people eating there. After you get past the Intercontinental and head north, you're getting to places like Lila Pante. Hello. Hello. Now, Lila Pantai at night is very popular. It's actually popular in the morning as well. I love that place. I've reviewed it. I'll leave a little link there. Lila Pantai, good food, cheap prices. Uh, highly recommended if you're in sort of this area, uh, Hyatt Regency uh, Intercon area. But apart from Lila Pantai, in this area, there's like a big stretch of bars and restaurants, and there's a huge selection. So if you're staying around the Intercon Hyatt Regency area, You've got so many choices, and if you choose one per night, you'll never get through them all. Hey. 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 Good music, Hi, Hi, how are you? So this one is a very popular place, Coco Bistro, always packed at night. In the mornings, got a few people, you know, sort of having a coffee there, but at night it really takes off because of that little fresh seafood area there. Very popular. Next up, we have Seagrass and La Playa. I won't be able to speak too much, because it's very noisy with the live music. As you can see, La Playa is probably one of the most popular places along the beach. A lot of regulars go there, uh, cheap beer, and the food is consistently good and they've got a big menu where you can try all sorts of different stuff. Just up from La Playa, we have Pizzeria, which is the Italian restaurant of the Hyatt Regency. Always got live music going on there. Very good, very professional. And that is one of the better meals you'll have in the whole of Sanua. Five star quality, world class, unreal, uh, good Italian food, staff are really nice. And you'll find a um, nice little outdoor area there. And if you don't like leaves and pieces of tree falling into your meal, you can head under the cover there. 
It's a beautiful spot. Highly recommend going to Pizzeria, even if you're not a guest at the Sheraton, because it's a top-notch Italian restaurant in town. Walking north from the Sheraton, it does get quite dark. Uh, but they do have security patrolling up and down this little beachfront path here. It feels quite safe for me, but again, depends on who you are and what you're worried about. But for me personally, it feels pretty good. The other thing to pay attention to is how many other people are walking up and down. And after you get past about the con intercon area, you'll find a lot more people walking back and forth because of those sort of cluster of hotels and people going out for dinner and stuff. Anywhere between sort of 6 p.m. and 10 p.m., there will be a fairly big stream of people walking up and down here. So that sort of adds to the sort of safety aspect as well. And just after you get through that dark section north of the Hyatt, you come into Undas. So Undas has an awesome restaurant down the front here. Uh, really beautiful. The Undas is actually by Hyatt Regency. And it's one of the best hotels I've ever stayed in. Um, I'm not sure if I've got the review up there yet, but I've recently stayed there. So if that's not already up, um, it will be soon. Just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful property. Um, yeah. <laughs> people are so friendly here. I've got people coming down on bicycles. Look at this. Hello. Hello. That's the sort of Bali we all love, those friendly Balinese people. I, that, that makes what, yeah, that makes us all love this place. So a little bit further up from Andas, you know, 50, 100 meters maybe, you get to Mayasanur. Very popular hotel and very popular breakfast as well. They've got live music here at night. Doesn't seem to be that many people in there. Fewer people than I expected, actually. The Maya Hotel is at Pantai Batu Jimbar. And from Pantai Batu Jimbar northwards, it's pitch black. And when I mean pitch black, I mean someone's got a little light on the beach here. I think they're warung or something like that. But apart from that, it's, yeah, real dark. Look at this. Like I can't see even where I'm going, so it might even be good to get your uh, your torch on around here on your phone, just to see where you're stepping. I was just doing a fast forward video uh, along the path here, just to show you how dark it is, but uh, it's more than just dark, it's pitch black. So all that you could see on the screen was blackness. I'm not even sure if you can see me now, maybe a little bit, because there's a light in the tree up there, but it's dark. So if you want to walk north past Batu Jimbar, Pantai Batu Jimbar, north past the Maya, north past Andas and the Hyatt, you're gonna to have to go through a dark section, a very dark section. Um, I'm okay with it, but some people are not going to be, that's for sure. But that shouldn't matter too much because there are lots of food options available down in that southern section there. That big group of restaurants, you could go for weeks there without going to the same place. And if you really wanted to come up further, just get onto the main road and get a cab, or do what I'm doing, and just walk it in the dark. So we're just arriving at Pantai Karang, which, I mean, you could say is about halfway up this beach walk. Yeah, and that was a long section there of complete darkness with nothing there. But if you like walking in the dark, it's fine. And we are into another pitch black section. And I do mean pitch black. I can see light behind me, but in front, it's just dead black and I can't see anything. I think this place could do with some street lights. It'd be great if the government could put some uh, lighting along here rather than relying on each of the restaurants and hotels to do it themselves. Because when there are gaps, it is totally black. So the government probably needs to step in and do something there because They've put a lot of money into this path, which is absolutely brilliant. You could take it up to the next level if you just put a few lights on it. We're just passing Nalayan at the moment. 
you see people there at lunch sometimes right now there are zero customers so I won't even film it which is a bit sad uh, when you see a restaurant with zero customers and then another one with a hundred which is what we've seen tonight look how brilliant this path can look when there's a bit of creative lighting around it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful but that's because of the uh, restaurants that have put out their own lighting there very beautiful place to walk right here so we're talking about about at the three kilometer mark about 500 meters north of Pantai Karang <laughs> And the reason this place looks so good is because it's the Gria Santrian and the Gria Santrian receives top marks in the hotel stakes. Absolutely brilliant hotel. That's the Masaki Hotel. Not much happening there at night. No one in the restaurant, no one in the pool. Uh, you'd be almost mistaken for saying that there's no one staying at the hotel. So it's quite quiet. Um, perhaps all their hotel guests go out somewhere else to eat. This is the beachfront at the Tanjung Sari. Super classy place with a super classy bar. And I filmed that during the day and it looks super classy during the day as well. They just get everything just right. You know, they've raked the, the sand, they've flattened all out, put some nice tables and chairs out there. The lighting is beautiful. And it just looks like a very attractive place to come and have a drink and a bit of a feed. Tanjung Sari, just remember that one. Icon Bali opening in the first quarter of 2024. Now it's not. By the looks of that thing, it won't be open until like the third quarter or even the fourth quarter of 2024. Like it's miles off, miles off. Maybe they'll open a little park in front or something like that while they still build the rest of it. And if we're passing the Icon, we are getting close to Pantai Sindu, which is a very popular beach with locals and foreigners alike. Most foreigners like to go up that end of town because there's a bunch of warungs there that do good seafood. A few good bars around there as well. Locals love to go there at sort of sunset and go for a dip or go and jajan or jajan means snacking in Indonesian. Go and have a few snacks. And that's the Sindhu Beach Market. Bunch of little uh, stalls in there selling knickknacks, clothes, t-shirts bottle openers in the shape of all sorts of different items. First place we have here is Cayu Manis. And then the next one along is Seoul on the beach. Cayu Manis, only about four tables at the moment in Cayu Manis, unfortunately. We've got live music though. But Seoul on the beach, a lot more popular. And you can see why, set up very attractively, nice lighting, just looks like a very welcoming place to go and have a meal. So we're at the Warungs at Pantai Sindu, and these are the famous places like that Dutz Burger. People rave about that, I think it's 20,000 for a burger. I, I haven't tried it, but people like it because it's cheap, but also tasty. Like, yeah, that's what you want, isn't it? You want cheap and tasty, you just don't want cheap. Lots of cheap places, but doing good food's another matter, and apparently they do it. And then there's all these warungs. Yeah, they're all the ones doing that um, seafood and all that sort of stuff, amphibia and the like, all located back there. Nice little spot for a dinner. Just on that amphibia place, highly recommend you um, search for that on YouTube. I haven't reviewed it, lots of other people have, and it looks like a really good place to go and get a seafood platter. I think they were charging 180 or 200,000 last time I looked for a big seafood platter for two. Definitely seems like a place to give a go if you're into that sort of seafood on the beach type thing. There are a few other little warungs and um, restaurants and bars down here at Pantai Sindhu. Some busier than others. That place looks empty, but it's not. If you look further down towards the beach there, it's absolutely packed. 
Um, that is Tootsie's. Looks quiet, but they're all down the beach. So it's busy and popular. So make sure you look, you know, on that beach side of the path when you're looking for a place, because you can be fooled by the, the restaurant side being absolutely empty. That's Birdhouse. Absolute huge building. A lot of money going into that. And it's popular too. Yeah, see, so there's people walking around like this all night. Oh, hang on, that's Susan. She's actually ridden the motorbike up to the other end of the beach to come and pick me up. Very nice of you. So I think the first time that Susan's purposely been on camera in one of my videos, she's always in the background lurking around. That's the first time on purpose. I'm gonna get her to speak one day, but that's gonna be a hard challenge. This is Pantai Segarra. And it's a bit dead around here. I actually haven't been here at night, but these warungs are absolutely dead and I had expected they might have a few customers, but it's obviously not happening. Um, which is a bit sad really, isn't it? Everyone's sort of congregating down at Sindhu, which is not that far away anyway. So we've reached the old Grand Inner Bali Hotel there. Uh, it used to be a big hulking old tired hotel just before it closed down and it's now turned into this. It looks quite beautiful with that massive big swimming pool out the front and some nice rooms over there. I think they're calling it the Meru now. I'm not sure, I mean it's not too busy. But it actually looks quite decent. Um, I really hope that it ends up being a really nice stylish hotel and not one of those sort of old Indonesian government type hotels which you know used to be around the place. Interestingly up in there where the lights are a bit of a different colour they're still doing construction in there and it's night time but it does look like above that there are people staying there. I'm not sure, I'm not sure Surely there's not people staying there while it's still under construction and, and renovation. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they're staying at the other uh, low-rise place over there. Not really sure. But I do hope it, I uh, oh, know, it can't, it can't be open. There's people working all over it. So I wonder what part of it's open. Susan reckons there's probably that place in the corner, that low-rise place in the corner that's open. The pool's open, there's a restaurant open, like pizza joint. But the rest of it, Looks all right, but I, I'm pretty sure they're still doing a lot of work in there. So most of those rooms look like they're occupied. Uh, the lights are on inside, curtains partially open, but there are so many, I mean, at least half of that is still under renovation. Perhaps some of those rooms are being used by the staff, like the construction staff as they work on it. That'd be pretty smart to do that. I wonder if they're that fortunate to get one of those nice rooms that they've just renovated and they maybe work their way down. I don't know. That's what I'd do if I was running the show. And we have arrived at Pantai Bangsa. At Pantai Bangsa, you've got the road up there. And the first place you can see up there, that's uh, Warung Makbang, which they do that uh, that fish head dish over there. I went there oh, maybe 15 years ago. Very good for local food, very good. Extremely popular as well. And there's actually a queue out the front at the moment, even though it's sort of 8.30 now. Uh, and up that road, there are a few other uh, warungs and restaurants. Um, not heaps of them, but there's a few up there. So if you're sort of staying in this area, there are a few bits and pieces there. But this would be classed as perhaps a little bit sort of a little bit out of the way. So if you're staying up Pante Bank Salend, it's sort of a little bit out of the way, a little bit far north. And to get to a lot of the places in the centre of town, you either need to walk yeah, one, one and a half k's, or maybe catch a cab. So as you can see, that beach walk is well lit in some places and poorly lit in others. You're going to need a light in some of those areas to make sure you know where you're stepping. 
If you're on your own and you don't feel safe in dark areas, it's not going to be for you. I don't mind it. And a lot of people won't mind it. Some people will. I can't comment on how safe it is. I don't know the crime statistics, but I've never seen anything bad happen in that area. The two main areas that have the most restaurants are Pante Sindhu in the north and around the Hyatt and the Intercon in the south where you've got a lot of those little cafes like Lilla Pante and bar slash restaurant places like La Playa, Seagrass, uh, Tapa or Tapa. They're the two areas that are really popular. So if you want to go down the beach for dinner at night, they're the two areas that you probably will focus on. I've actually done a few of these little walks along the beach, along Danao Tumblingan. Uh, I've walked down Jalanchamara as well and Sudamala. And I'll link to those below. So you can have a look at those as well to see what else is going on around Sanua. You can get a feel for what's where in town. And if you haven't been to Sanua before, where you might want to stay, what sort of hotel you might want to stay in based on restaurants and that sort of thing but needless to say up and down this beach if you're staying on a beachfront hotel you should be able to walk out the front turn left or right and find a restaurant so that's five kilometers in just over an hour a cracking pace if you ask me thanks for watching make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all things Sanua. i'll catch you next time